Okay, so in this case, we want to verify the following. We want to verify the Laplace equation. Now here, of course, don't get intimidated by the term Laplace equation. No one is asking you to solve the equation or to derive the equation. That is when you'd be worried. But here, they just want you to verify. And apparently, verification is easy because what you're seeing there is partial x, partial x, meaning get the second partial of x, of f with respect to x, then plus partial f, as in partial f, partial y, twice as well, show that this will reduce to zero. This is what the Laplace equation says. Now they want us to verify it. How do we do this? Well, we just have to get the second partial of f with respect to x, and then also get the second partial of f with respect to y, then add them. What they want us to show is that when we add them, this will give us zero. But is that what we are going to obtain? Let's see if that will be the case. So to avoid spending too much time here, we're going to differentiate tan in the exact same way that we described in the, in the other video. So let's see how we do that. So as I mentioned, to differentiate tan, we're going to just keep in mind that the derivative, or let's say if one variable is kept as a constant, partial, partial x of tan inverse of let's say some function u, a function of x. So let me just keep it like this. When I restrict it to just say a function of x, then I am allowed to just say d dx. I mean, since this is basically just a function of x. Of course, here, even if it will come as y over x, y is a constant. So as a function, it's just a function of x in this case. So in this case, we know to say the derivative of tan inverse in that case is basically just going to be the derivative of u with respect to x then of course, by saying u prime, that just means the derivative of u with respect to x, then this is going to be over one plus u, a function of x, but just square it. So that is what we're going to use. In the same way, uh, when you get partial y there, it's just going to be u a function of one, differentiate it on top, then just square it down and add to one. So that is how we're going to get the derivative. But how do we verify this, uh, this, this law or this equation? So let's do the math now. So you have to see that this is actually quite straightforward. We just have to get the partials twice. So let's get partial f partial x the first time. So when we get partial f partial x the first time, of course, this just means partial f partial x, we're differentiating tan inverse with respect to x. So of course, this is going to be the derivative, or let me say partial, the argument, let's differentiate the argument in the same way that you're doing this, meaning it's with respect to x. Find the derivative of the function. The way it is there, I'll just take the x up so that it becomes y to the power x, not y to the power, it's y x. But since the x was in the denominator, I express it as a negative power there. Then this is going to be over one, plus the square of the argument. Now for this part, I know to say this version or this way of representation is the same as this. So I can choose which one is favorable. I've expressed, I've used this one here because I know I'm about to differentiate, but I'll keep it as y over x in the denominator because I'm just squaring there. No, nothing, is, nothing will change there. So in the denominator, I'll write it as the argument there, which is y over x. But here, I'll just square it. When you simplify that, let's get the partial on top. With respect to x, negative one will multiply, subtract one from the power. This becomes negative y, and then x to the power minus two. Then this will be over one plus, this is y squared over x squared. So this is where we are now. You can change this, since that is a minus, you can now write it in a, in, a, in a more formal way. And this becomes minus y, or the minus can be given to the entire structure, 
this becomes y over x squared over one plus y squared over x squared. At this point now, looks like this can actually be written in a, in, in, in a nicer way. So write the whole, try to write the whole structure or the whole expression as a single fraction. As a single fraction, how will it look like? So of course we know to say this is just going to be minus. This is going to be y. Yes, please. Okay, so this is going to be y over x squared. I'll change the division to multiplication, which will make this one over. And this, of course, these are going to swap a little bit. I'll directly write this. Should have done that earlier. Let me do this in this step so that I don't do too much at once. I'll write the denominator as a single fraction which will make this x squared plus y squared over x squared. Now I can change the division, which is that one there to multiplication. And of course, this is going to be minus y over x squared, multiplying, they will swap what is on top. The x will now be on top, the x squared, then this will be over x squared plus y squared. This and this will cancel out so that this remains as just minus y over x squared plus y squared. So this is where we are now. This is just the first part, which is fx. Are we okay there? Yes. Okay. We can now get the second partial. The second partial, f x x, is the same as the second partial of f with respect to x. Now, what are we doing here? So again, I can first write this as minus y, and then x squared plus y squared, then to the power minus one. Now, don't be carried away here. The fact that the numerator is, or the first part here is a y, and I'm differentiating with respect to x, means that I should not be intimidated here. I won't, but it's not really even intimidating. It wouldn't be intimidating. But all in all, you are not using product rule because this is as good as if you have two, and then x squared plus two squared to the power negative one. You know, this is a constant. You, want, you don't need product rule to differentiate that. You just use that power rule there, or chain rule, because of what is inside. Okay, so how do we differentiate this? Again, I'll start by writing down the minus y because it is a constant, it won't change anything. Then I'll differentiate what comes next. When I start differentiating, the power comes down, multiplies down, negative one. The argument remains the same, x squared plus y squared. The power reduces by one, it becomes minus two. Then differentiate the argument. So remember this is chain rule, differentiate the structure, then differentiate the argument. The derivative of the argument will be two x, y squared is a constant, so we'll leave it there. This becomes our derivative. Now we just have to simplify this so that it is more presentable. The negative and the negative will make positive. So this becomes two x y, and then this part goes in the denominator so that the power becomes positive. So this becomes x squared plus y squared to the power two. This is what fxx has reduced to be. Now, our question is, will y as an fyy also reduce to the same conclusion? Not just the same conclusion. It has to reduce to something close to this, but it has to be negative. So that when we put it here, it will subtract like that. It has to be the same, exactly the same, but it must have the opposite sign so that it adds to zero. 
That is what we should have there if we are to verify that law. But are we going to get that? Are we going to be successful? Let's see what we get. So we start with the original structure or the original expression. But now we want to find the second partial with respect to y. So where are we starting from? We start with partial f, partial y, which is basically just f, y. With respect to y, it's the same expression. First, differentiate the argument. Now I'll take a shortcut. I'll differentiate the argument there. That just be one over x. Then I'll divide this by one plus the square of the argument, which is y squared over x squared. Please keep verifying what I'm doing in case I make a slight error there. But here, y is the variable, so that the derivative of y will be one. So this will be one over x. Okay, now I want to write this as a single fraction. First, I'll keep that one over x over, this will be x squared plus y squared over x squared. As a single fraction, what do we see? Fy or partial f partial y is now one over x, one over x multiplying, the numerator becomes this side to be x squared over x squared plus y squared. X cancels once. Now we end up with partial y being equal to the numerator is now x over x squared plus y squared. So this is now what we have there. Now, having found partial f partial y, we now have to get the second partial. So the second partial derivative of f with respect to y, which is basically just partial f, partial x like that. Again, I'll express this as x, and then this will be x squared plus y squared. But now this is minus one. When I do the derivative there, again, I'm not using product rule because I'm doing with respect to y. So why did I write x here? This is partial y. Okay, so this is a constant, this is a constant. So when I start, the X is a constant, the negative one multiplies down, I have minus X, the argument remains the same. The power reduces by one, becomes minus two, differentiate the argument, this becomes my, not even minus, becomes two Y. Simplify this, the minus is still survives, which is good, it's, that's a good sign, minus two X Y. Uh, take that to the denominator so that the power becomes positive. You now have x squared plus y squared. And we're done. Now let's combine them. So let's get f, x, x. And the second partial of f with respect to x, we found this one. I hope you guys have seen that we're going to get what we want there. So that is second partial of f with respect to x. Plus, now let's get f, y, y. The second partial of f with respect to y, we just found this one. Now let's see if this reduces to zero. Clearly, this is two x, y x squared plus y squared. I hope you guys can see it already. The sign on the middle becomes minus, which is what I wanted. x, y over x squared plus y squared squared. And this was also squared here. Do you see that this will be equals to zero, which verifies the Laplace equation. Okay, so this is how you do it for that question. Any questions before we proceed? By the same logic, as you guys are figuring out if you've got a question, I want you guys to try to do this exact same thing, but now for this one here. So try to see if you can verify Laplace equation 
for when f of x comma y is equals to lean x squared plus y squared. Okay, 